In this module, we'll be discussing pelvis and hip x-rays. This will include the AP pelvis and the AP and lateral hip. Before we move forward with the module, I want to make sure since we're going to be using the table bucky and we're going to have a cassette inside the table, you're going to want to make sure that you align your camera appropriately height-wise, width-wise, and uh, longitudinally with the bucky itself. You've got locks that should lock in place so you'll be ready to perform the examination when the patient comes into the room. You'll place the patient on the room, uh, on the table for their AP pelvis. They'll lay on their back. They'll have their legs extended. You'll want to have them separate their legs and then bring their toes in to touch. Uh, again, we're 40 inches away from the grid itself. Now, as far as centering your crosshairs, in this particular exam, you're paying more attention to where the top of the cassette is. Here's how it's going to work. You're, you may ha already have a receptor that's built into the table. In that case, you'll probably already have this table lined up appropriately with the light opening up to the appropriate level. But those of you who are using cassettes, you want to load the cassette into the bucky in landscape position. Why? Because you want to make sure that you're able to fit both hips onto the film. If you put the cassette underneath the table, in portrait position, then you stand a good chance of cutting off the hips. So make sure it's landscape. Once you've done that, you'll modify your collimators so that top to bottom, you'll have 14 inches from here to here, top to bottom. And then from side to side, you'll make sure you have a setting of 17 inches. So it's a 14 by 17. Once you get those measurements, then you'll want to palpate the iliac crest which is where the patient puts their hands on their hips. And you'll want to align the top of the cassette just above the iliac crest. Now remember, the iliac crest is also at the same level as the umbilicus, which is the belly button. So either you utilize the crest as a landmark or you'll use the belly button and you'll put the crest slightly above one or both of those marks. Once you have that, you, you have the appropriate uh, collimator settings so you don't so much have to worry about the lower portion of the light. It'll fall in place itself. But you will want to center the patient midline. This is where the crosshairs come. Somewhere halfway between these two points and midline. Now I'll put it right up here. The crosshairs, uh, their midline which is straight down the center of the body but also your crosshairs are halfway between the symphysis and the umbilicus. I know these are medical terms that you might not have been exposed to, but the symphysis is where the legs come together, where they join right here. And the umbilicus is the belly button. So halfway between where the legs come together and the belly button is where you want your crosshairs to be lined up, right there in the center of the picture. And so we're ready to go. A good technique to use for this image is 12 mass at 75 kvp. Here's a good examination of a good pelvis. You include uh, uh, much of the hip on, on there. This is the proximal femur, so you want to make sure you include the ball of the femur um, as well as the surgical neck. You see we've got what's called the greater trochanter. It extends all the way down to the lesser trochanter and then on into the femur. This is a pretty good amount of the femur that you want to include. Whoops, let's go back. Also, on this side, you've got um, the same setup. You want to make sure that you're getting both hips on there evenly. And then, of course, the entire pelvis, which is shaped essentially like a butterfly. You want to make sure you include the entire pelvis on the examination. If you cut off too much of the hips here, if you, can't, if you don't include the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanters on the image, it may be uh, uh, a need for a repeat. So the hips are just as important as the pelvis itself. As for the AP hip, <clears throat> this is essentially identical to the AP pelvis, except you're just moving the patient just a little bit. In other words, we're still doing this whole thing at, uh, using the table bucky, 40 inches, but the patient is still lying on their back, legs extended, legs slightly apart with their toes touching, everything the same. 
but if you're x-raying the right hip, you push the patient away from you and you're going to line that crosshair right there in the groin. Now, if you've got a question of where the groin is, if you simply bend your leg up, you can poke your groin right there where the leg bends. It's right there in the center. That's exactly where the hip meets uh, the pelvis, That's, or where the femur meets the pelvis. It's the hip joint. So you want to center right there in the center of the groin. I used to ask people if they would bend their legs so that I could better evaluate where exactly this place was. I don't go in there and poke, but I make a pretty good assumption of where it is. So once you're aligned with this, uh, the one side, then you can turn around and shoot your examination using the exact same technique that we did for the pelvis, 12 masses, 75 kbp. Now for the anatomical evaluation, we have exactly what we um, had included as far as the hip goes on the pelvis film. You've got the femoral head, this round articulation. What's very important is you want to include what's called the acetabulum. To you, just to make it easier, I don't want to over uh, inundate you with anatomy. Remember in high school, the ball and socket joint? As long as you include that ball and socket joint, you've got it on that image then you're good to go. I would probably shoot to include somewhere around this much of the pelvis when you're doing an AP hip. But honestly, as long as you get that ball and socket joint right there, you're doing really well. But you also want to visualize the entire area. Sometimes you have people that are really heavy and they've got a lot of tissue overlapping this area right here. And then suddenly they have skinny legs. So what will happen is you'll use a technique and it's completely white right here and completely dark down here. And uh, it's, it can be challenging sometimes to get a good technique that'll, that's a nice uh, even plateau between the two. But again, reminding you, uh, the anatomy that we're discussing uh, is the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. The greater trochanter is the one on the outside, tells you that this is an AP film and the lesser one uh, it does the exact same thing. We've got a red marker, uh, a right marker here indicating uh, laterality, which is great. And you want to make sure that you didn't either over, uh, uh, overexpose or underexpose because we have to see the bone formations, the, the joints, the, the small nuances here, because sometimes even the smallest uh, injury can be a fracture. It can be very difficult to see that when you don't have an optimized film. And for the lateral hip, I put a little frog in here so you remember we've got a frog lateral. When you're doing a side shot, you simply have the patient bend their knee up and then drop it slowly down to the side and you'll have them in position to do the uh, lateral hip. Again, we almost have an identical, um, in, uh, identical position as we did the first two examinations. This is a little different in the sense that the patient really does drop their leg further out, they abduct their leg out. So your job is to find the groin again and position the central crosshairs right there over the groin and you're ready to shoot your x-ray again. Now don't be surprised, there's a lot of people that can't do this. This requires some flexibility. If need be, you can prop them up on pillows or have them roll up to one side, not all the way, only about 30 degrees because you don't want to turn them too much, you won't be able to get your x-ray but you can turn them slightly so they're not forced to drop that leg down and injure themselves. Again, the technique is similar to the other two images, 12 mass at 75 kbp. Please remember that is a benchmark setting. It's a starting point. It may or may not work depending on the factors that you have in your facility, but those are typically uh, good baseline factors. This is what a lateral um, hip looks like. I wanted to bring in the AP so you could have a look at the AP again. So remember the trochanter, the, the greater trochanter, the lesser, you got the femoral neck. That all disappears when you do a lateral. In fact, it almost looks like one contiguous bone all the way up to into the joint space. So if you have what looks like just a straight stick leading to you know, a, a, a circle into a hip, then you know you've got yourself a lateral. This is actually a beautiful lateral done. So. This will help you evaluate whether or not your patient is in a true lateral position or not. You want to get uh, achieve this as much as you can. Honestly, some patients are going to give you a little bit of trouble because it does require a little bit of flexibility, but this is what you're shooting for.
And that concludes our evaluation of the hip and pelvis.